Good morning, and welcome to worship on this wonderful fourth Sunday in Advent. We're so excited that you are worshiping with us this morning, and we trust that God has blessed you uh, this week and will continue to bless you in your life. We um, are celebrating the fourth Sunday in Advent, um, our Advent candle this week in the Advent wreath is for peace. We'll be lighting that in a moment. So I would invite you to have a candle ready in your home that you could light along with me so that you're participating with me in the lighting of the Advent candle. We want to thank you all for remembering the church in this pandemic and in this time of uncertainty and fear and unrest. Um, we're so grateful that you are continuing to remember the church. Your contributions have really helped in terms of uh, meeting our expectations of different folks who we owe money to, like the light people and the power people and that kind of thing. And so we do appreciate so much your help in meeting our financial obligations and uh, keeping your church open. We will be here at some point when we open up and we will rejoice to see you again in person. Um, we'll still not be able to hug one another, but boy, won't it be great when we can get back together. So please continue to do what you need to do to keep yourself safe. Wear your mask, wash your hands. Uh, please, please keep yourself safe. And uh, of course, social distance. Our Christmas Eve service will be a pre-recorded uh, service, just like this one is, but we will put it on the YouTube channel, uh, which is Westy UMC. There's no space in there between Westy and the U in UMC. So it's Westy UMC, and also we will have it on our church website by Christmas Eve morning so that you can look at the service when it's convenient for you and your family to worship together and we pray that it will be a time of blessing. We're doing the usual format. Um, we're having a Christmas story. We are <clears throat> having some guest musicians and so that'll be wonderful. Uh, these are live guest musicians, not from YouTube, although we will be of course having uh, music from YouTube, but just wanted you to know that we're working hard to enhance the worship service so that it is a time of blessing in your life. Um, let's see, and then the week after Christmas, um, I'm going to take a little break, and so our conference has put together a worship service that's beautiful, um, and they have they're allowing everybody to download that and put it on their websites for the worship so that clergy can have a break after Christmas. So there will be a worship service, of course. Um, again, go to our website and um, you will be able to see that as well. I also want to announce to you that we have a charge conference coming up in January. It will be on, uh, let me find the date here, <laughs> it is on Thursday, January 7th at 7 o'clock. So I need to announce that to you and let you know that that's happening. If you want to be a part of that, please email me and let me know what your email address is and we can get you the link so that you can join with us on that. All right, uh, we are going to continue with our worship service and may you be blessed this day. Hmm. I gotta find the prelude. So let me let me move to our prelude. Uh, I don't think I have a slide for that, but um, Judy Sepagan will be playing um, our prelude, and so we will move to that this morning.
I'm having a little te technical difficulty, so please bear with me. I'm trying my best. Oh, come on, thing. Okay. All right. Um, will you please join with me in the call to celebration? God is in our midst. Do not fear. God rejoices to renew our lives in steadfast love. Trust in God who is our strength and life. With joyous hearts we will tell of God's glorious deeds. And now we will have our opening hymn. It came upon a midnight clear. Just one moment, please. Now the angels see. 
Will you join with me in our call to celebration? Let us hear what the Lord will speak, for God will speak peace to us all. Let us prepare for Christ to enter our hearts. Come together as the family of God for worship, prayer, and praise. We give thanks to God who gives us the gift of life. And now we're going to light our Advent candle. Um, as I said earlier, today's Advent candle stands for peace. Today we remember Joseph worn-out traveler, worried husband, doing what was necessary for the sake of his family, the burden of poverty stifling his hope in the promise of God. There was no room for him, yet he knows to whom he belongs. Today we give thanks for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. We who live in discord and strife have found peace in the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the peace candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace and God's eternal kingdom. I would invite you to get ready to light your candles. The first candle we lit, lit was for love. The second candle we lit was for hope. The other way around, hope then love. The third one was the pink candle, which stood for joy. And the fourth candle we light today, which stands for peace. Will you join with me in the prayer? O oh God, rejoicing, we remember the promise of your Son. As the light from this candle, may the blessing of Christ come upon us, brightening our way and guiding us by his truth. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of our world, and to us as we wait for his coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Will you join with me in our community prayer? Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that, being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory. Amen. As we go to a time of prayer this morning, I would ask you to rejoice with me that Ruth Post has been discharged from the hospital and is now in a care center. Um, she's, going, she's gone there to get a little bit stronger so that she can go back home. Um, I will send an email out to the congregation that uh, tells you of Ruth's address at the care center. She would love to get some Christmas cards. I think that would really brighten her day. And so if you would please uh, send some Christmas cards to Ruth and watch your emails for that uh, address for Ruth. I, um, I would understand that there are people in your own life that you would like to pray for people that you know need your prayers. This is a time when we go to our Lord uh, with our hearts open and with our hearts seeking praise and um, worship. So I would ask that you take a moment now. Let us do some silent praying and lift up those people who are on our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for all you have done for your people. We thank you that you have revealed yourself in your Son, that you have made a way that we can come into new life, and that we can constantly be reshaped into your image and likeness. We thank you for all the blessings of life, for family, for health, for peace. As we continue in this season of Advent, we thank you also for what you have, have planned for us that we cannot even know. We thank you for the unexpected. We thank you, God, for all you have planned and that is which is beyond our comprehension. Give us a spirit of holy expectation a capacity to live our lives with wide-eyed wonder for the surprises that you have in store for us. We've grown accustomed to making our lives as routine as possible. We've come to expect that what you will do is what you've always done, and what you will give is what you have always given. And that who you will be to us is what you have always been. And that we will accomplish for your kingdom the kinds of things that we have always done. But you shocked the world. You turned it upside down when you took flesh in Jesus. You made a new covenant when you visited the world as one of us. The God who created all things became a part of creation. So, visit us. Visit us in unexpected ways. Give us a yearning for your visitation. Renew your calling in our lives. And in this season of Advent, may we remember to reflect on what you have been in our lives. May we remember to keep our eyes focused on you. Turn our hearts to reflect the wonder and magic of your love.
and keep us praying as Jesus taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every week, as you send in your offerings, we do receive those. Uh, we are so glad and, and uh, encouraged that you're sending them in. And when I receive them, I pray over each envelope, and then I give it to our treasurer, Cindy, so that she can deposit it. But in the worship service, it's important for us to lift up each of those gifts that you're sending in and to dedicate them to uh, our ministry and to God's work in our midst. And so I would ask that you join with me now in the prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for your mercy and protection, for feeding us physically and spiritually, for caring for us like a shepherd. We present our offerings as an act of gratitude. What we can never repay, we pause to appreciate. We dedicate ourselves and these gifts to honor Christ through ministry in the world. Amen. Our scripture for today is taken from Isaiah 9 verse 2 and verse 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Sunday we're, of course, doing our Christmas cantata. This was written by Lloyd Larson. Um, it is a wonderful cantata, and uh, so we would present that to you now. It is called Joy Has Dawned. Oops.
has come. Joy has dawned, and today we celebrate God's great gift of love to all. But to Old Testament Israel, the hope of a brighter tomorrow, the promise of a joyful future, seemed an elusive dream. For over 400 years, God's chosen people languished in bondage, longing for the day when the promised Messiah would come to deliver them. The prophet Isaiah had assured them that though they were a people walking in darkness, a great light would eventually shine upon them. A child would be born, a son given, and the government would be upon his shoulders, and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Anguish and weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. and give birth to Emmanuel. In God's perfect timing, a young maiden named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David, was chosen by God to become the mother of the promised Messiah. And so it came to be that Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Mary and Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Bethlehem, the town of David. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. 
Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, for there had been no room for them in the inn. Just an ordinary night. There were shepherds keeping watch over their sheep on a Judean hillside outside of Bethlehem. But this night became like no other night, when an angel appeared to the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to all.
The shepherds immediately left and soon found Mary, Joseph, and the newborn baby who was lying in the manger, just as the angel had told them. After offering their humble gifts of adoration and praise, they hurried off to spread the word of all they had witnessed, the angelic proclamation, the newborn child in the manger, the wonder of two young parents embracing their miraculous roles in God's unfolding story. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them. Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod. 
there were magi from the east who came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. King Herod, disturbed by this inquiry, called together the chief priests and the teachers of the law, asking them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, quoting from the prophet Micah. Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child, then report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. The Magi went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped over the place where the child was. There they found Jesus with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Opening their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. Christmas story is a story of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. This is a story of great joy. It is the fulfillment of God's promise to end the night of suffering with the dawn of redeeming light. With angels, shepherds, and magi, we celebrate the joyous news that the Messiah has been born. Joy has dawned upon the world. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Good courage.
Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice, for Christ is born today. Go tell it. Go and shout it from the mountaintops. Jesus Christ is born.
That was indeed a wonderful, wonderful presentation. We are so blessed to be a part of that. And now will you join with me in the benediction. May God equip us to serve all people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ooh.